Have you taken the time to become more self-reliant since the pandemic hit in 2020? Now's the time to become more self-reliant. If you were prepared for the pandemic, great. If you weren't, it should have been a wake-up call. If you live on the East Coast and you weren't prepared for the cyber attack that hit our Colonial Pipeline, now's the time to start being prepared. You have to be self-reliant. If the government can't stop people from attacking our infrastructure, what makes you think they're going to be able to bring food and water to you? It's time to become self-reliant and not rely on a bunch of bureaucrats in Washington, D.C. that do not care about you. Good morning, YouTube. Thank you for taking the time and watching this video. Whether you're new to prepping or you've been doing it for years, there's a reason for you to be doing it. Whether you were concerned about an EMP, financial collapse, nuclear holocaust, or you're new to prepping because of the pandemic. Either one of those reasons, you're doing it for a reason, and we're gonna discuss it in today's video. So there are many reasons why you should be prepared for the future and something bad to possibly happen. You know, some, pe some people have been doing this for years. Some people are new to it. <clears throat> some people are gonna understand what I'm talking about. Some people are literally blissfully unaware of what is going on. And <clears throat> it's the cyber warfare and we're gonna be discussing that in this video. I have a coworker. when the pipeline was attacked, she didn't have gas in her car and she doesn't watch the news, which I understand. And she didn't even realize there was anything really bad going on. Right now we are in a cyber war. It has been going on since post 9-11, but it has gotten really bad since probably 2018, 2019, um, it really got ramped up quite a bit in the last couple years. And these are things you need to be prepared for. You know, the JBS meatpacking plant and the Colonial Pipeline attacks, the best way I can describe those, because they were kind of on a national level, they were probes. You know, you probe your enemy, whether you're <laughs> firing artillery at them, you're having a patrol go out to see, find out where the enemy is, probe their defenses. You know, our defenses were probed and they understand how fragile we are. I was recently reading an article in the Wall Street Journal and it talked about all the cyber attacks on our hospital systems and this is really super bad you don't hear about this in the news the little bit you do hear about it it's a blurb here it's a blurb there and it crippled parts of this country when the hospital systems went down again the article is from the Wall Street Journal I'm gonna to try to put a link in the description below but if you read the whole entire article it will be a major wake-up call for you. As I was reading the article, one of the states had one of their major hospital systems attacked. And it was so bad, as I was reading the article, a little girl had an allergic reaction to some type of food she ate. She went to the ER and they wouldn't treat her because the computers weren't working. Luckily, the mother went to the drugstore or maybe a doctor there told her, you know, maybe get some Benadryl, it'll, it'll treat it. And the little girl was okay. So there's a couple things that happened. First, there's the cyber attack. Then there's the inability to treat people because of a computer. That's how dependent we are on automation. And another thing that should really be a big wake-up call, not for me, not for just you, but... You know, not to go on a rant, rant about bureaucrats who run hospitals, but 
for them not to treat somebody because the computers were down when they knew what they needed to do. You don't need a computer to make a clinical diagnosis to see someone's in shock. I mean, hell, I'm just a dumb grunt and I could have figured that one out, but they didn't do anything. Whether it's because they couldn't bill them, I don't know. You know, the insurance money was more important than the life in that situation to me is what I read and took out of that little part of the article I read. Either way, just think about that for a minute. If there's a coordinated cyber attack on things, we're in deep kimchi. And that's what we're going to delve into a little bit more. So I want you to take a minute and think about this if you could. Imagine that there's a coordinated cyber attack on our power grid. And I'm not talking about a small municipality. I'm talking something that affects the entire nation because all of our power, you know, is on a couple different grids. Texas has their own and then there's two other major power grids and what would happen if those power grids were attacked at the same time and you know the people that do these attacks they do not care one bit about your life they want chaos if you read the article that I'm talking about that I'm putting a link in the description below they 100% know that they're tied to Russia. They know for a fact that they are tied to the Russian intelligence agencies. And all they care about is two things, getting their money and bringing us to our knees. They don't need to nuke us. They don't need to fire an EMP. All they have to do is take down our computer systems and we're screwed and you can bet your bottom dollar we can do the same thing to them you know the new nukes are technology you know and everybody has phones everybody had not everybody but most people have phones computers we have smart TVs but we all rely on the same thing computers so imagine the power grid goes down and we don't have any electricity. Most stores should have backup generators. Like in South Florida, I know they do. They can run their power to keep their meat fresh, their frozen items frozen. But I don't like I live in northeast Tennessee. I don't know if the local stores around here have the big generators like they have in Florida or other areas that get affected by hurricanes. So let's just take it down a notch. Let's take it down to your local municipality had a cyber attack and the power's out. Then you're not going to have fresh water. They attack the sewage plants. They put an attack on the water treatment facilities. You know, all these things that can happen will have a major effect. Just think about if they hit Walmart, just one company. It's a major company, but they cripple Walmart's computers. And this is how reliant we are on the computers. Walmart distributes from their big giant dis distribution centers and now they can't distribute. So when you go to the point of sale at Walmart, they scan your item, the computer says, oh, our inventory is low. They send a message to the distribution center. The distribution center fills the order, sends it to the local store. Well, what if they can't do that? And Walmart's down for a couple weeks. Other than that having major impact on our economy, just one store, what would happen to all the other grocery stores in your area? And there's a lot in most towns. Now they have to absorb the customers that are going to be coming to get their stuff. And I'm not talking about, okay, I need to get 
a new sheet for my bed. I'm talking about the food because they move lots and lots of food. Now your local Kroger's, Publix, Vaughn, Safeway, whatever store is going to have to absorb the extra customers and they're not going to be able to do it. I mean, it's going to be bad. So let's take it a step further and say a company like Publix, because they're a pretty huge um, grocery chain, not in my area, but we'll talk South Florida, and they got attacked also. Who's going to absorb those customers? How are the people going to get food? And then we'll take it another step for further and say they lost their power. So after X amount of time, their generators are going to run out of juice to keep things cold and frozen. And what are they going to do with all that food? We saw this happen in Texas. They threw food away at grocery stores. And they literally had to have police officers guarding the trash because of the bad meat. Now, whether the meat was bad or not, I don't know. But they threw a lot of product away. Dairy products, meat products, out the door in the trash can. So, you know, a lot of bad things can happen at one time, and we're in deep trouble. I really hope y'all take the time and do some soul searching and think about what has happened recently. And it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. when uh, our system is really hurt bad. I mean, this can 100% cause a financial collapse and things can get really bad really fast if the water's not being treated, if the sewage isn't flushing, if the food isn't being restocked at the local grocery stores. You really, really need to think about being prepared because I've said this before, you know, we have this saying in the prepper community, SHTF should hit the fan. Well, it's hit the fan in little pieces and the chunks are getting bigger that are flying at the fan right now. And y'all need to be prepared. Get your food, get water stored, have a way to prepare your food. You know, I've said this before, you don't want to survive, you want to thrive. But if things get really bad for some people, you're going to need to know how to survive. Again, there's a link in the description below to the Wall Street Journal article that I discussed about at the beginning of the video. It's a really well-written article. It's kind of scary to be truthful. I hope you take the time to read that article. It'll be a real big wake-up call. We're not hearing about this in the mainstream media. And again, thanks for time for thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Um, if you like it, please hit the like button and share it with your friends to help support the channel. And you can always go to avprepping.com. We're blogging. There's just so much going on right now. And Take the time to read the article, get prepared, stay safe. If you're thinking about prepping, now's a really good time to start being prepared. God bless America, and thank you for the, taking the time to watch this video. Y'all stay safe.